Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock. This is Capital View. Good Sunday morning, everybody, and welcome to Capital View. I'm Bob Flossen. Arkansas teachers are pushing ahead for a better pay before legislative sessions starting soon. But the debate among many Arkansas lawmakers is how to make that work if possible. State Representative Bruce Cazort joining us now here. He is the uh, House Education Committee. And also want to mention that State Representative Reginald Murdoch, he'll be joining us in a moment as well to discuss this. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Um, let's, everyone seems to be in consensus um, that teachers in Arkansas need a raise. We're, we're kind of like the lower end of the tier when it comes to teacher pay in the state. Um, we want to bring it up. Um, the, the consensus kind of falls apart when it comes to how to make this happen, even though we've got a billion dollar surplus. What, what are our sticking points at this point? And do you see this coming up in the special session that will begin in August? Well, I will not disagree. We do need to bring our teachers up in pay, and we, we've uh, been doing a little, little of that. I won't say we've done enough, but we're going to try to make that better. But yes, uh, I, I don't see that coming up in a special session. The governor has pretty adamantly said no, he's not going to do that, mm -hmm. and uh, that's fine. Uh, we really don't want it to come up in special session because right now we're in the middle of an adequacy process, which figures those rates and those things for the next two years down the road. So we need to do something, but not right now. Uh, then the, the, there's been an option of uh, teacher bonuses rather than a pay raise. Uh, I can't. Teachers want the pay raise, not the bonus. Sure, is, is and, it, and that's what we hear. But I mean, why would you not want a bonus also? So it's just a one-time bonus. So mm -hmm. I don't know why you would not want that. Uh, it's not. It's not taking the place of a raise. The raise is coming. We just have to figure out the proper way to do it. And with the funds that are being used, and I've been talked to about, um, there's been some uh, pandemic relief fund, I believe, that that, yes. that was used. That can that be used for teacher raises? Should that be used, or should the state itself be funding it? Teacher raises, no. It could be done for teacher bonuses. The, the, all, all of the pandemic money was for just teacher. Well, it was for a lot of things, but it could be used for teacher bonuses and mm -hmm. uh, to help them out. But raises have to come through the state ma uh, matrix. That's what they do. And that's that's kind of where we're at when trying to figure out just exactly how this is going to happen and when it's going to happen. That's correct. And I, I assume that the, I haven't spoken to teachers directly, but I assume some teachers out there are saying, well, here we are again. The, the state and lawmakers say, give teachers a raise. They deserve a raise. But now we're kind of sidestepping the issue. Well, I don't think we've sidestepped the issue at all. I mean, we, they may think we are now, but for the last two sessions, we've actually bumped them up a lot. The governor, uh, we worked on a minimum salary increase to start with, mm -hmm. and then we worked on a uh, teacher salary uh, adjustment, and it's a mid-salary uh, adjustment. So those are the two things, and that brought everything up. We have really brought the line item up from way down up to $70,000 for a teacher salary at this time with a, still a um, 36 minimum starting salary. That's the things we need to work on. And educators, are they're a special group of people. They, they dedicate so much of their time and their own financial resources to making sure kids have what they need in the classroom. Um, it's got to at least raise a lot of eyebrows, too, when you see cities like Dallas recruiting for teachers in Arkansas. Because I've seen some billboards saying, hey, move to Dallas. We're paying our teachers 60000 or whatever it was. That's got to be startling. Well, evidently, We want to keep our teachers here. Well, evidently, teachers don't want to be down there. That's why they're advertising. So, yeah, I think we have a better place to live. <coughs> Our costs are different than Dallas, but I think we've got a great place. And we know we have a great a lot, a lot of, all of our teachers are great teachers. They mm -hmm. do a phenomenal job, despite what was said about me the last two days. On, what was on that? that, was, that you, you mentioned that earlier, that there was, you were misquoted or? I was misquoted. I was speaking to a group, and we were, uh, they were asking questions left and right, and uh, a question was asked about why kids are, um, leaving school for, for uh, choicing out and going and why our parents asking them. I said, well, there are some issues in some areas where you have uh, teachers that probably aren't quite doing their job or they're not mm -hmm. really as um, good as they really should or could be. I said, and I did not say that in general. I said that is selective because I do hear that from superintendents and principals. Being the chair of education, we get reports on a lot of things. So we do hear that they have problems with some teachers. And I just made a general comment about that. It, it kind of got just a little clip taken out, and uh, it looked like it was for general, but it's not. And I apologize to teachers if you think I did that. I did not. I love you guys, and, and I would never harm you in any way. 
education has been a big part of your life. It has. You, you've been around it, so certainly you have a lot of admiration for other educators out there. Um, school safety, something we like to talk about too. The, um, the board is going to be meeting, or the school safety commission is going to be meeting. I guess they have um, something August. they have to bring to the governor's desk. I think the first. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty quick. That's what pretty do we quick. What do we expect? So uh, what we're asking for is some guidance on uh, what we do with the 50 million we're looking at, and probably in a special session to grant them with some grants and what the grant would look like. I've talked with the Department of Ed and we have some kind of guideline on how we would fund the schools at what levels and how much, but we really need to know what the guidelines uh, that the uh, Criminal Justice Institute says we really need for schools. Mm -hmm. We know that 50 million is uh, not gonna be enough to uh, supply resource officers. It's just one-time money. So uh, we know there's gonna be other things such as door locks or cameras or special things that they need to make their school safe. And uh, that's what we're looking for, it's waiting on that guideline. And that seems like that's something that's going to be evolving for generations to come. Oh, forever. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Mr. Kazort, thank you very much for spending time with us this Sunday morning. Certainly appreciate it. Glad to do it. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. Stay right there. We're back with more Capital View right after this. Arkansas. Welcome back, everybody, and we continue to talk about teacher pay on this Sunday morning. State Representative Reginald Murdoch joining us now. He is also on the House Education Committee, a Democrat, uh, Mr. Kazort, a Republican. Um, two different sides on this, sir. Uh, Mr. Murdoch, why do we need teacher raises right now? How come we can't have them right now? Well, uh, why we need them right now is, is, is obvious. It's because uh, for many, many years, our soldiers, as I call them, have been on the front line doing the greatest job, the best job, the most admirable, admirable job that we could ever expect from those that we put before our children, give them the task of educating our most precious commodity, which is our children that will one day lead America. They have an opportunity now to have a appreciable raise. We need to do it. It's time to do it. And it has not been done. When you look at the, the facts, this is not debate. Look at the numbers and where Arkansas rank. We have to do better. We can do better. That is a debate is very confusing to me and disappointing to me because we have an opportunity because of a pandemic, a tragedy that, that gives opportunity for a blessing as many times my God will do and give us an opportunity to take this blessing and help those and appreciate those that have done some of the greatest duty and work that we can ever imagine. Many of us have not chosen that field of endeavor. And we should appreciate them. We have the opportunity to do it. We have the dollars. Why it can't happen is because it's not priority. It's not money. It's not anything but priority. And we can make it happen. There are certainly other things that we can choose, as you hear my colleagues on the other side choosing to do. That's a choice. In this situation, it's only choice. Uh, the Democrats have put a plan um, together, and it's on the table. You'd like to see it brought up in the special session. Um, tell us about the plan, and what do you think the chances are it's going to be heard? Well, the details of the plan is something that we want to bring before the people. I won't bore you with the exact limits of those plans because it's somewhat is a well-developed plan that deserves a true uh, opportunity to be presented in, in a longer, longer form than we have. Here's the point. We have put a plan together. There's a way to get this done that the legislature would or the majority legislature would not even allow it to come to a debate. That's where we are as a legislature. We should bring the people's voice to Little Rock and for them not to give the governor the confidence that we would, uh, you know, hear that properly and it can't even get on the call is an insult. It's an insult to the voters in Arkansas. You deserve to hear how we can make this happen. You can't truly hear it until it's brought to the call. So I think at minimum, it should be brought to the call so that our teachers can have a chance in Arkansas. The voters all can have a chance and the rest of the members in the General Assembly can have a chance to see the proposal, have a chance to appreciate it, debate it, and then we bring it into fruition because the teachers are worth it. It's time, we have the money. Please, let's make it priority over other things that are priority. The uh, special session, um, obviously coming up rapidly, they're still about a week or so out. Is there still some time, are there still discussions between both parties and, and everyone who is 
conflicted right now on, on coming together on this issue? Because certainly there has to be some voices in uh, districts all over the state from teachers and uh, from parents as well on, on trying to get something done or maybe a better understanding of why something isn't being done right now. Well, all of that's happening is, is, is currently still happening as the day approaches. I know myself every day I'm spending hours uh, talking to my colleagues, associations, other advocacies across the state, uh, even uh, members of the um, the executive branch, trying to get them to, to sensitize and understand why we need to do this now. Why we not, you know, adequacy is a conversation that we've had and continue to have and has a purpose. Bonuses is a conversation that we've had and things we've been able to do to help teachers, which are great. What we're talking about something now is totally different. And we don't need to uh, uh, convolute the conversation of teacher pay raise with those other things, adequacy or the bonus. What I want to do is be pure, be honest with the people. Let's allow them to hear the plan, hear what we can bring forward, how everyone in Arkansas would be, can be proud. And we can then stop losing our quality educators to other in industry and to other states that are paying much better. If not now, when? And why would we continue to wait to kick the can down the road and continue to lose teachers and fall backwards? The numbers say the ranking is clear. And you can't say now we don't have the dollars. We do, and we have the Democrats have put together a plan, a formidable plan for sustainability, if they're willing to listen. That seems to be the uh, the bottom line. Coming together on this issues to give teachers or this issue to give teachers a, a, a pay raise. Uh, it will continue to evolve, and we'll see what happens during the special session, if anything. Representative Murdoch, thank you very much for your time this Sunday morning. Thank you so much. God bless you. Coming up next on Capitol View, the deadline for the Arkansas School Safety Commission's interim report is approaching. What could be on their report to the governor? Take a look next. Welcome back to Capitol View. It's been a busy week. It's going to be a busy week. The final meeting, the Arkansas School Safety Commission, before it hands over its interim report to Governor Hutchinson coming up. It's due August 1st. Samantha Boyd recaps some of the items discussed in the latest meeting. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. The Arkansas School Safety Commission meets a final time before turning in an interim report to Governor Asa Hutchinson. To um, help us ensure that what happened in Nevalde doesn't happen here. The commission reconvened following the Uvalde shooting in May. No campus should ever be without an armed presence at all times when staff and children are attending class or major extracurricular activity. Washington now, County Sheriff Tim Helder is recommending more armed officers on campus and making active shooter trainings mandatory throughout the state for officers. I can't think of a better time to get it done than now that we become a little bit more forceful in our approach as far as what we want the legislature to do. Chief Chris Chapman, the chair of the Intelligence and Communications Subcommittee, recommends closely monitoring the social media of potential shooters. That will require law enforcement to develop intelligence specialists. Pointing to the Uvalde shooter whose social media was filled with red flags prior to the shooting. Once those suspicious activity reports come in, we need to have the ability to track them. Other ideas mentioned Tuesday, the physical security of schools, keeping school and classroom doors locked at all times, and more closely monitoring firearm sales in the state. We can get there. Uh, I, I truly believe that, or I wouldn't be sitting here today. Samantha Boyd reporting an interim report is due to Governor Hutchinson tomorrow. The commission is taking a break next week and we will reconvene August 9th. A group of Arkansas mayors working together to help South communities that are dealing with flooding and other natural disasters. The meeting in Camden comes after the announcement of $95 million grant to fund 19 watershed projects in Arkansas. President of Arkansas's Black Mayor Association, Jillian Lodge, says the funding will strengthen those smaller communities. We feel like once flooding and the water issues are taken care of, our communities will be able to stand much stronger. And that will bring us another step closer to achieving the quality, clean water that we're hoping to have. The funding is made possible by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Eudora and surrounding South Arkansas cities will soon see these resolutions in effect after an executive meeting on August 11th. Oh, supporters of the proposed marijuana initiative reached the nearly 90,000 signatures needed to qualify for the November ballot. 
More than 192,000 signatures were submitted earlier this month for the proposal that would allow people aged 21 and older to have up to one ounce of marijuana. Medical marijuana is already legal in Arkansas. The marijuana proposal is one of two initiatives that could be on the ballot this fall. Officials also verifying signatures for one that would scale back a casino measure voters approved in 2018. That proposal would remove Pope County as one of the four counties where a casino is allowed. And Congress is working to implement stricter guidelines to protect children's safety and privacy while online. Washington correspondent Alexander Limon reports there are several pieces of legislation aimed at holding big tech accountable. Senators say big tech and social media companies are a danger to children. Using its black box algorithms to drive destructive content to children, content about the self-harm, substance abuse, bullying, Addiction. Wednesday, a Senate committee worked on two pieces of legislation aimed at protecting children online. The Kids Online Safety Act is co-sponsored by Democrat Richard Blumenthal and Republican Marsha Blackburn. The senators worked with parents who told them they became more concerned about their children's online safety and privacy when the pandemic hit. And they began to see that the enemy wasn't always outside the home. Many times it was inside the four walls of their home and it was coming at their child off of a device. The bill would crack down on sites and apps aimed at kids, requiring default settings for children under 16, setting rules for how and where children's data can be shared, and limiting how much time kids can spend on a platform. And it would give parents and minors more control. Provides them with tools, controls, options, safeguards to disable the addictive features, to disarm the algorithms and protect their information. A third bill, the American Data Privacy Protection Act, would enact stricter rules for children and adults. All of the bills have bipartisan support. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Senate Democrats are hoping to move quickly on a major spending bill. That measure supported by President Biden already getting major pushback from Republicans. Chief White House correspondent Kristen Welker has details on this. This morning, Senate Democrats are in an all-out blitz to come together around a newly reached spending deal. Yesterday President Biden hailed the measure as a giant leap forward for the country and urged lawmakers to act quickly. Pass it. Pass it for the American people. The bill is sharply scaled back from Democrats' initial proposal more than a year ago, but it aims to lower health care costs by locking in lower premiums for individuals who get their health care from the Affordable Care Act and through changes to Medicare that could lower some prescription drug prices. It also includes the largest investment in fighting climate change in U.S. history, pouring $369 billion into energy and climate programs. This bill is far from perfect. It's a compromise. But Republicans are blasting the plan, arguing it could add to the nation's soaring inflation. It's not the time to increase taxes or spending. It's going to feed the fires of inflation. Democrats insist the bill will help lower inflation and the national deficit. But Republicans believe the 15 percent corporate minimum tax that Democrats are proposing to pay for it is bad for business. I'm deeply concerned that we are going to be taxing American workers, uh, which is what happens when you tax companies. With a 50-50 Senate, Democrats can't afford any defections, putting the focus on Arizona's Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema, a key swing voter who was not part of the discussions about the deal, brokered by Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Sinema's spokesperson, noncommittal. She doesn't have comment. She's going to be reviewing the text. As Democrats expressed measured optimism. I would hope that she would be receptive. Hopefully we'll have 50 votes. House Democrats unveiled a new bill they say would force the wealthiest Americans to pay their fair share. It brings to light President Biden's proposal for a billionaire's minimum income tax. Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor has more on the debate that's ongoing. It is obscene. That's how Tennessee Democrat Congressman Steve Cohen describes the current tax code that he says favors the wealthy. Billionaires are using that money to buy spaceships and sports teams and trying to buy Twitter and sometimes even buying elections. Cohen introduced a new bill Thursday to enact President Biden's proposal for a billionaire's minimum income tax. 
It would require taxpayers worth more than $100 million to pay a minimum 20% tax on their capital gains each year, regardless of whether they sold assets for a profit or continue to hold them. To make America fair and just and progressive. Cohen argues those tax dollars could improve health care, child care, and education, but Republicans aren't sold. They always have to have a boogeyman, and it's going to be the billionaires or the big oil companies, and they never want to take responsibility for their actions. Arkansas Congressman Bruce Westerman says Democrats' policies are already driving inflation, and instead of looking at tax reform, Westerman argues Congress should focus on issues like domestic energy production. They try to say it's for the climate. Well, if it's for the climate, let's use American resources that are produced much uh, cleaner and, and in a much better way for the environment than transporting fossil fuels across the ocean on tankers. Cohen's bill is not part of the tax and climate deal Senate Democrats announced Wednesday, but it does include a minimum tax on wealthy corporations. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. The Chips and Science Act is on its way to President Biden's desk. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and other congressional leaders held a bill enrollment ceremony at the Capitol Friday morning. The bipartisan legislation, which was officially passed on Thursday, aims to boost domestic production of computer chips and increase America's competitiveness with China. Ahead of the signing, Speaker Pelosi said the bill was a major step forward to meet and beat the challenges of the 21st century. The Korean War Memorial on the National Mall is now officially complete. Nearly three decades later, an international gathering dedicated the Wall of Remembrance. It displays the names of the 36,000 Americans who died supporting the war and the more than 7,000 Koreans who died augmenting the military. The VA estimates there are more than 1 million Korean War veterans living today, but by 2030, there will be less than 200,000. Thank them all for their service. Stick around. You're watching Capitol View. On this Sunday, on the political scene in Arkansas. And that is it for this Sunday morning. We're back next week with an all new Capital View. Certainly hope you enjoyed the rest of your weekend, everybody. Life strategy.